And some Texas Democrats are reportedly planning to leave the state in an attempt to stop Republicans there from passing elections legislation. Over the weekend, measures advanced in both the House and the Senate in a special session, setting the stage for a floor vote in the next few days. But now a group of Democrats are reportedly heading to Washington, D.C. instead. Mimi Marziani, president of the Texas Civil Rights Project, joins me now for more on this. Mimi, thanks for being here. You know, the last time elections bills came up for a vote, Democrats walked out of the state house in order to stop them. Now, some are planning to leave the state entirely. Now, the last time they staged a walkout, they got a lot of criticism saying they failed the people of Texas, they failed to do their jobs, they're trying to thwart democracy. Uh, the Democrats who did this said they're actually trying to protect democracy. But, but what do you think? Is this a good idea for them to do this again? And how long can this go on for? Yeah, first, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, I think it's really important to be clear on the entire context here. I mean, we are talking about an omnibus package of tactics that would make voting scarier and more difficult for election administrators and for voters of all stripes, including and especially voters of color. And these are um, tactics that are not designed to actually solve problems here in Texas. Instead, it is pushing forward the will of the shadowy national groups that have been pushing for these types of laws across the country. And so, you know, in actuality, what we've been seeing, including over the weekend, when um, proponents of these bills tried to shove forward hearings in, um, in the middle of a holiday weekend when many people are on family vacation, we still saw hundreds of people from across the state, grassroots folks, showing up and testifying against it. The general premise of staging a walkout, do you see any problems with the precedent that could set where whatever party doesn't get their way then just decides, well, then we're just not going to vote? Look, um, I do not think this sort of thing should ever be done lightly. It's similar to the use of the filibuster in the U.S. Senate. These should be extreme devices used in extreme times. But that's where we are in Texas. I mean, remember also that Governor Abbott, at the end of the regular legislative session, because the governor was angry that he didn't see a voter suppression bill to his liking, he actually vetoed the entire legislative budget starting on September 1. So when you're thinking about abuse of power and failure to do one's job, actually trying to wipe out an entire other branch of government seems like um, the, the first place to start there. So yes, I mean, the, the overall situation is far from ideal, but I do feel strongly that the folks that are breaking quorum today are doing so to try to protect our democracy and because they have no other choice in this moment. So let's talk a little bit more about the what's actually in the legislation, because among other things, the bill bans 24 hour voting and drive through voting, both used in the Democratic stronghold of Harris County in the last election. Now, Governor Abbott was asked about why these things should be outlawed. And I want you to listen to his answer and then I want to get your reaction to it. With 24-hour voting, one thing that we want to make sure that we have is integrity in the ballot box system, uh, and we need to have uh, poll watchers and monitors. And candidly, it's hard even for a county uh, to get people to be watching the polls 24 hours a day. If you do drive-through voting, are you going to have people in the car with you, uh, and it could be somebody from your employer or somebody else who may have some coercive effect on the way that you would cast your ballot, which is contrary to you going into the ballot box alone and no one there watching over your shoulder so that the, uh, you're, the way you vote, only you will know uh, what the vote will be. And to allow other people to pile into a car with you, uh, it will alter that. So Mimi, what's your response to that? One, one that it's just a, a burden, a big burden to staff and monitor polling places around the clock. So that's just patently not true. Um, we saw extended, I mean, and, and to be clear, this bill would actually ban not just 24 hour voting, but extended hour voting of all stripes. And we did see that in Harris County, home to Houston, but we also saw it in places like Brownsville in South Texas and in other parts of the state. And I think what this law does is it takes away those options from local election officials to create voting opportunities that are best for their community. Harris County is a great example because in 2020, Harris County was one of the hardest hit counties in the country um, with COVID. And so we know that some of the people who used things like 24-hour voting 
were nurses who were working long shifts and were having overnight and were having trouble finding times to go during regular business hours. So, you know, I, I think that the response to that is we there was no problems that surface um, from 24 hour voting. Of course, we all believe it should be secure and run like all other voting opportunities. But if local officials are able to do it and able to staff it, I don't see why in the world we would stand in front of them it, it, unless we just wanted to make voting more difficult for the people of Texas. Then there's the drive through voting. You know, voting is supposed to be a private and secret thing. There's a reason we have screens up and curtains in some cases so that you can truly vote for whoever you think is best without fear of repercussions. So does the governor here have a point that drive through voting and the ability to have people in the car with you can jeopardize that? I think that we can have our cake and eat it too here. There are, um, the, the drive-through voting works just about like the, anything else you do drive-through. It's basically the same experience, just modified slightly. And so there are ways that you can have a screen held right up to the car. There's no reason that that would have to invade the privacy of the ballot. And we had no official reports, including in the hotline that my organization the Texas Civil Rights Project ran, and we got you know tens of thousands of reports. We have no suggestion that there was a privacy of the ballot issue with drive-through voting. Instead, it was just a very popular device for folks of all stripes to use. They found it much more convenient and a lot safer during the midst of a global pandemic. All right, Mimi Marziani, president of the Texas Civil Rights Project. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.